There's nothing quite like going to an actual store and being able to buy something in person. This is still true for a lot of things even in this digital age, but it is also true for retro games. Some collectors are blessed to have close access to some great locally owned retro gaming stores. However, if you're not in a major market in America or elsewhere, this is less likely to be the case. And that's my situation. I am within driving distance of two stores that sell old games almost exclusively. One of them is about 12 minutes away from home. The other one is about 45 minutes away, so I usually don't go there, but that one is actually close to where I work. They are part of two different, bigger chains of stores with locations all over the place. So what is the biggest problem with both of them? Well, it's not the prices. The prices are pretty competitive with eBay at both stores. I think it's unrealistic to expect a lot better than that in this current market. Are the employees rude like some of the ones I've encountered at GameStop over the years? No, quite the contrary actually. They've been pretty honest and respectful with me at least. One time I was recommended to sell an expensive game I own on eBay instead of selling to them. Not that I was trying to sell to them in the first place. I had just brought up casually that I own some popular SNES RPGs. However, it was good to know that the guy behind the counter wasn't just desperate to add a valuable game to the inventory. I've even had to return something to one of these stores before, and the employees were cool about it. They also don't try to annoy me with upselling like the folks at GameStop, which I like. The biggest problem with both of these stores is the lack of games. In particular, I'm talking about a lack of games that serious gamers would want to own and play. Now they do have some really good games here and there, but many of them are locked underneath the glass counter or in some big glass case on display. Plus, there's not a lot of space behind the counter at either of these stores because they're both pretty small. Otherwise, the racks are filled with mostly old sports games, some games based on movies or TV shows, and Wii and DS shovelware that no self-respecting gamer wanted back in the heyday of those systems. If you're looking to collect Madden NFL games, you come to the right place, but I don't think that describes most retro gamers out there. From what I've seen, this is a problem that has gotten worse over the years. The one closest to me, for example, used to have more quality games when it first opened up several years ago. Slowly but surely, the inventory has gotten worse. Also, both of these stores have some quirks when it comes to certain systems. The other place that is closer to where I work has almost no Game Boy, Game Boy Color, or Game Boy Advance games, but they have plenty of Game Gear cartridges for some reason. The one closest to home is especially pitiful nowadays when it comes to Super Nintendo games, but I think a lot of that is because the demand for those games is so high. However, that store does have ColecoVision games and even a few Atari 800, 5200, and 7800 games. One other thing is that import games are not sold at either one. Now I never expected these places to carry import games in the first place, just because it's a bit of a niche in the market. But some locally owned shops in larger markets do carry imported games from Japan. I know Pink Gorilla in Seattle, Washington does, which is co-owned by Kelsey Lewin, who is known for being a part of MJR's crew and a co-founder of the Video Game History Foundation. That being said, a place like that may be the exception and not the norm. Let me know in the comments if you've been to a store that sells older import games or know of one that does. From talking to the employees a little bit here and there over the years, the good stuff gets sold quickly. I was talking to one of them a month ago at the one closer to where I work, and he told me that if they get a Pokemon game, it's getting sold in a day or two. Years ago, I was told by somebody who worked at the other one that they sometimes have people come from outside of town just to spend hundreds of dollars on games and maybe even consoles. I highly doubt they were there to just complete their EA Sports collection. They were clearly going after the better stuff in stock. I definitely believe this because I met somebody years ago who had a complete North American Sega Dreamcast collection at one point. And he told me that he used to call stores all over the place looking for games to complete his collection. I do not doubt that there are a handful of hardcore collectors looking to buy up classic games any way they can. 
It also would not surprise me if some of them are actually resellers who get these games, get the price labels off of them, get the adhesive cleaned off, and then sell them on eBay or elsewhere for more than what they paid, taking an approach vaguely reminiscent of house flippers. This approach probably works better though if you get these games elsewhere like at a Goodwill or a flea market, and specifically for cartridge based games that are in high demand. But either way, I'm not a big fan of anyone trying to do this. Plus, remember when I said that these stores are part of two different chains that have locations elsewhere? That obviously factors into what they get to sell. Corporate is not going to send a lot of the best inventory to a bunch of smaller locations where there's less potential for foot traffic. They are going to send that stock to bigger markets like Houston, Chicago, Miami, LA, or New York City if they have locations in those metropolitan areas and are not just confined to a small region. And it does not have to be a city that big to get picked over my local area because the closest store to home is in a smaller city of about 20 to 30,000 people and the other place is in a city of over 100,000 I think. Another thing that comes with a bigger market versus a smaller one is that there are probably more people who are willing to bring in old games in these metropolitan areas. Granted, you're not going to get much money if you sell to a store like this, but it is more convenient than trying to sell on eBay, especially if you're not tech savvy and just don't care. Not being able to get valuable games consistently in stock is probably a big reason why these stores sell more than video games at this point. These stores sell old movies on DVD for pretty cheap. They'll buy old smartphones and resell them. The one closest to me sells DVDs, tabletop games, albums on CD, and I've even seen a guitar and amplifier there, which is kind of weird. These stores are a decent place to get some cheap accessories for your old consoles, but don't expect a lot of high quality stuff in this regard. Ultimately, just about all of the things that I've discussed so far clearly illustrate that there is a high demand for these classic games and only a limited supply of them. While I do believe that some of the price increases have to do with speculation, the reality is that the lack of supply is real. Plus, there was definitely an increase in demand around 2020 when COVID hit even when you look at games for a system like the Nintendo 64 that weren't known for getting out of hand price wise prior to that, you do notice a significant price increase around that time period. There have been some fluctuations since then, and we're lucky that prices haven't gone up even further due to inflation. However, the latter might just be a sign of gamers getting out of collecting in order to focus on more important priorities like paying the bills. I believe that there is an opportunity in this market for a major publisher to start reproducing their old games from let's say the 8-bit or 16-bit era in order to sell them at these retro gaming stores or even a store like GameStop. For example, I feel like Konami, Capcom, Square Enix, and especially Nintendo could make good money selling official reproductions of let's say their Super Nintendo games for 40 50 bucks and get away with those prices easily. The demand is there for physical games that people can hold in their hands and play on their original consoles, and I think people would buy these games if they saw them in some new, unopened boxes behind a glass case. Limited Run Games is releasing a new version of Doom for the Super Nintendo with a special FX chip inside the cartridge. I just wish a better company was taking care of distributing it, but it does show that there is demand for what I'm talking about. I also wouldn't mind seeing some newer games for older consoles being sold in actual stores, but I don't think those developers could afford the manufacturing and distribution. The only way they might be able to do that is if they work with a limited edition physical game company like Limited Run Games or Strictly Limited Games, which runs the risk of being a mess. To get back to the main point of this video and finish things up, I don't expect this problem with my stores to be solved anytime soon, if at all. In fact, I just think it'll get worse and worse over time. That being said though, I still like visiting these stores from time to time. I don't have terrible experiences with these places per se, outside of the lack of good games in stock. 
It's almost like visiting a tiny little museum that happens to be a business. Sometimes you do see some things in person that you haven't seen before. And sometimes I even buy something. I haven't mentioned the name of these two chains throughout this video, not because I have friends who work at either one at this point, but because of the fact that I don't think it's a problem exclusive to them. Honestly, I suspect this issue is affecting a lot of stores out there. I just wanted to get this video out mainly to see if this situation relates to anyone or not. So that is going to be it for this video. Are you in the same boat that I'm in regarding your local retro gaming stores? Or are you lucky enough to have a great store nearby with a lot of great games available? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you run a retro gaming store or work at one, i love to see what you think as well. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.